What's up guys and welcome back to On The Brick. This is actually the third video in a three-part series that I have been doing. If you haven't seen parts one and two, they're not entirely necessary, but they will help you have a much better understanding of the things I'm going to talk about today, and so the links are in the description down below. But now, welcome to what is probably going to be the most controversial video on this channel. At least until the next time I say that a brick vault set is bad. Over the last two weeks, most of you have been extremely civil in your comments, and I sincerely appreciate that. But I have a feeling that the title alone is going to make some people upset, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, this isn't for those people. If you have absolutely no interest in opening your mind and hearing opinions that aren't yours, this video isn't going to change your mind, and it's not for you. So if you're one of those people who've come by just to try to debunk everything that I've said, thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video. Because today, I'm talking to those of you who are willing to open your ears, open your mind, and hear something a little strange as I am going to be talking in defense of Boot Lego. It's interesting actually, in my entire life I have done a lot of very crazy and somewhat unique things. For instance, in just the past 10 years I have climbed to the top of the Taipei 101, helped clean out a Filipino river, swam with dolphins and jumped over a Komodo dragon on a monkey infested island. Yes, those are all actually true and not even some of the more exciting things I've done. I have been fortunate enough to meet athletes, politicians, and even what we now call influencers. And yet, out of everything, this is for some reason the most controversial topic. This, for some reason, is where the most amount of arguments come from. And I don't really get it. And I assume that's because there are actually a lot of misconceptions when it comes to boot Lego and real Lego, but we've talked about that a little bit. And so today, I'm going to be going through those misconceptions to help clear them up for you, starting with the obvious one that you've probably been asking. Why am I calling it boot Lego? Isn't it Lepin? No. No, it's not. While Lepin is definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest, non-LEGO brand out there, there are two very important things to keep in mind. We'll talk about that first point now, and then we'll come back around to the second one when it's a little more appropriate. So, the first thing that you need to know about Lepin is that it's dead! On May 1st, 2019, thanks to legal action taken by LEGO, hold your applause, we're gonna come back to that, Lepin shut down all operations, meaning it is no longer a thing anymore. It does not exist. It is gone. This legal action had to do with the fact that Lepin was selling their own version of LEGO sets, something which a lot of you have commented on saying that is the only problem you actually have with non-LEGO. And this legal action is something that I'm sure most LEGO fans would already know and probably even see as a victory for LEGO. And maybe it even was. When Lepin was shut down, LEGO obviously wasn't silent about this. In fact, Robin Smith, the LEGO VP General Counsel for China and Asia Pacific, said the company appreciated the police's hard work to protect IPR in China. I quote, We believe that the copycat products would have had a significant impact on our business and a lot of other companies in China, she said. We really don't like to see these products on the shelves because we're concerned about the safety of our own products. And on the surface, that's a completely fair statement to say. It makes sense. But let's actually look at it. As I said, Lepin shut down on May 1st, 2019. So let's take a look at the two years before then, 2019 itself, and the two years since then. 2017 obviously was not a very good year for LEGO. It was the first time in 13 years that they had seen a decline in sales. Okay, maybe Lepin had something to do with that. But in 2018, both revenue and operating profit grew 4%, while consumer sales worldwide grew 3%. While that might not seem like a lot, we're talking $5.5 billion, or $1.2 billion net profit, which is still a significant amount. Man, Lepin must have really hurt them if $1.2 billion was not a lot. Okay, but now, 
we're gonna go on to 2019, and if what this person said is true and Lepin was hurting them, we should see a significant increase in sales, right? Robin Smith said these companies were having a significant impact, so with Lepin gone, we should see that impact lessen. And, well, they actually kind of did. Global consumer sales grew 5.6%, revenue grew a total of 6%, but net profit stayed about the same at 1.3 billion US dollars. And in 2020, they again continued to grow with 13% revenue growth. Though to be completely fair, 2020 was a bit of an unusual year and things like Lego were extremely helpful when everyone had to stay inside. While I have no doubts that Lego would have continued to grow in 2020, the the boom and explosion that happened is more to do with COVID and less to do with literally anything else. Also, there was a surge of growth in China, which, huh, I wonder why. And obviously, seeing that we are only halfway through 2021, there is no super financial report, but everything I saw shows that they are doing well so far. So yeah, looking at the numbers makes it seem like this person was right. Getting rid of Lepin must have really helped them. 2019 saw a pretty big growth and 2020 exploded in sales. But remember how I said there was one more thing about Lepin that we needed to keep in mind? Funny thing, it wasn't and isn't the only one. Just like a Hydra, when Lepin shut down, several other companies took its place. In fact, it even split up into three different companies, King, Queen, and Jack. Though technically they might still be the same company. So yeah, those numbers look great if you ignore the fact that companies like Zingbao and Equal existed beforehand and companies like Mold King or King, Queen, and Jack and so many others have only come into existence after Afterwards. So those numbers look wonderful if you ignore the fact that it's actually significantly easier to buy non-LEGO products now than it was in 2019. Those numbers look so good and look like they are in fact confirming what Robin said if you ignore the facts so it can fit your agenda. But seriously, it's a little bit of a ridiculous statement when you actually look at what's going on behind the scenes. Companies like Mold King and websites like Yorwab or Vonadu didn't exist when Lepin was shut down. They only started selling products afterwards. And if one company was having significant effect on LEGO, then wouldn't 15 companies be having a bigger, more negative effect? Wouldn't these companies coming into existence cause LEGO sales to actually decline instead of exponentially grow? It's almost like the existence of these companies not only has had no effect on LEGO, but that competition is extremely necessary and healthy for companies to grow. With absolutely no offense meant towards Robin or anyone at LEGO, that was an incredibly dumb thing to say. LEGO has and will continue to grow regardless of these companies' existence. Since LEGO seems to be, in my opinion, extremely trigger-happy with sending legal action, why didn't they do such with any of these companies like they did with Lepin? First, they did try on several occasions, and second, it's in large part because they don't actually have a case anymore. Remember how LEGO lost the cases against Tygo and Mega Constructs? It's for similar reasons here. There's this idea going around that these quote-unquote knockoff companies are illegal or what they are doing is legal, but that is simply not true. The reason these companies are even able to exist and make LEGO compatible bricks is because the patent for the LEGO brick design expired several years ago, opening it up to anyone to use. You yourself, right now, could go and make LEGO-like bricks, and they could not do anything about it. Knowing their track record, they would probably try to anyway. I mean, they did attempt to extend their patent and were unsuccessful in doing so, but there is nothing illegal or wrong about selling non-LEGO pieces or sets that use non-LEGO pieces. However, that didn't stop LEGO from trying to go after some of these companies, like I said. They did attempt to take legal action, but as been the case in the past, it was found that the design of the brick is not a matter of trademark, 
work but a matter of patent, which again, had expired. And as we discussed in the first video, since there is no such thing as a worldwide patent, that kind of makes all of this a gray area anyway. And that's actually really weird when you stop and think about it, because outside of the world of LEGO, just in general, not having a worldwide patent could lead to a lot of problems. Nothing serious or world ending of course, but it really should be a thing. I need to look into this, maybe it will be a second channel video one day. So to clarify this just a little bit, if anyone was to make plastic building blocks that had the LEGO logo on them, that would be illegal. The act of making plastic building blocks in itself is not. And of course, the act of making their own versions of designs that LEGO has put out is illegal. That is something you cannot do because that is a matter of trademark and the reason Lepin was shut down. But I really want to ask you something that some of you might not be okay with. When it comes to Lepin having stolen some of LEGO's designs, why exactly is that a bad thing? Okay, look, stealing is wrong, I know that. It's in all the laws, it's even in the Bible as one of the Ten Commandments. I get it, stealing is wrong. That's not necessarily what I'm asking. What I mean though, is that most of the sets that Lepin sold were LEGO sets that were no longer in production. Yes, they had some that were actively on shelves, and again, this whole thing is still wrong, that's why they paid the price, but most of what they sold were out of production LEGO sets. Take for instance the UCS Imperial Shuttle, set number 10212, containing 2,482 pieces and 5 minifigures, which came out in 2010. When this set originally came out in 2010, it retailed for 200 60 pieces, which is a little much for everything that it was, but totally worth it. For a lot of people, this is one of their favorite UCS sets out there, and deservedly so. It's minifig scale, it uses a lot of snot techniques, and it just looks wonderful. In fact, it is my favorite UCS set. But a lot of people just didn't get it, especially the younger ones watching this video. And if you wanted to buy a brand new sealed version of this set right now, you would end up having to pay $830 plus whatever shipping from Korea is for the cheapest option. And let's say you didn't want to wait the shipping time for that to come from Korea and so you wanted to buy directly from the US, your cheapest option is now $1200. That's just under $1000 more than the original retail price. Or you could go to one of these non-LEGO companies and get the same exact set just using non-LEGO pieces, minifigures, everything included, for $95. Now I was never really good at math, but I'm pretty sure $95 is a lot less than $1,200 or even $850 or even $450 for a used version. And if you were wondering, eBay prices are not much better. But here's what I don't really get about all that because obviously people do buy through Bricklink and they do buy through eBay. But up until last year, LEGO didn't own Bricklink, which meant whenever anyone made a purchase on Bricklink, none of that money ever made its way to LEGO. At all. Before LEGO's requisition of Bricklink last year, 0% of the money made in Bricklink orders went to LEGO. So even if you had spent the $1200 on a new version of this set off of Bricklink, LEGO did not get any benefit from that. And the weird thing is that I have heard from so many people that when you buy from non-LEGO companies, you are stealing money from LEGO. But are you? I mean, no, you're obviously not. Like I said, even if you buy LEGO secondhand, they're still not really benefiting from that. Now, if you buy a set off of Bricklink, they kind of do because they own the site, but before last year, that just wasn't the case. And so, even if you wanted to buy a LEGO set legitimately, you weren't giving them money. And if you buy the non-LEGO version, you're still not giving them money. Nothing changed there except for the bricks you got. And I can tell you firsthand that this Imperial Shuttle is actually perfectly fine. But let's talk a little bit more about this exchange of money thing, because it's not just to do with sets that are retired. 
it also has to do a lot with how expensive LEGO is nowadays because we all have to admit that LEGO is growing more expensive. And it's not just inflation. Take for example the relatively new UCS Imperial Star Destroyer, set number 75252, containing only 4,784 pieces, yet costing a whopping $700. While plenty of people will justify the price, and with how big some of these plates are, it is a little understandable. Not necessarily $200 more expensive than it should be understandable, but big plates cost more money. However, at the end of the day, it is $700, and $700 is a lot of money. At the time of making this video, the national minimum wage in the United States is a horrifically low $7.25. Seriously guys, that needs to change. If someone working that wanted to buy this UCS Imperial Star Destroyer, including the additional cost of tax when purchasing and the cost of tax taken out of every paycheck, this worker would have to work approximately 150 hours just to buy this. And if you have ever worked at or close to minimum wage, then you are well aware that you are definitely not working full time. You'd be lucky to get maybe 20 hours a week. Which means this person would have to work two months just to buy this thing, and that's assuming that they didn't buy or pay for anything else in those two months. But even for people with higher paying jobs, this is still a lot. When this thing came out, I was actually working a full time, well paying job, and I never even considered getting it because it's just way too expensive. I would absolutely love to have this thing, but I'm never gonna spend $700 on it. In fact, $700 is two monthly payments of rent for me, and if I had to pick, it's not a choice. I'm picking rent every single time. But if I go back to that same website, you can find this same set there for only $218. Assuming again someone is working minimum wage doing all the same math, this time they would only have to work 50 hours in order to get this, or just about two and a half weeks. It's about a third of the time as the original real LEGO version, while being three and a half times cheaper. But remember how I said I had absolutely no intention of getting the real LEGO version of this set? Let me say that sentence in a different way. I do not plan to give LEGO any money for this item. Which means LEGO is getting $0 out of me for this particular set. It really doesn't matter, I am not spending $700 on this thing. But if I were to get the King version, which I probably won't, but if I were to, LEGO would still be getting $0 out of me. Again, it doesn't change. It's not different. The amount of money going towards LEGO was always the same. And that is something that I think is incredibly important for people to realize. Sometimes it's just a matter of cost. No one out there is trying to stick it to LEGO or anything like that at all. In fact, it's a mutual loving relationship between both. To make that sound a little less weird, just because I or someone buys non-LEGO doesn't mean they don't buy real LEGO. Of course they do. Every single time that I go grocery shopping, I will pass by the LEGO aisle just to see if there's something I think about picking up. And usually there is. My childhood home at my parents' house is still full of tons of LEGO. My entire apartment is full of tons of LEGO. I mean, I started a channel specifically about custom LEGO. But I just don't want to spend, and I can't spend, a thousand dollars on a set when I could spend 250 on the same one. Economically, for me, it is so much better to go with the cheaper option. Because at the end of the day, we're still talking about plastic building blocks. We're not talking about anything super life important or anything. Like when you buy toilet paper, you don't really want to go with the cheaper option because you want something that's actually better quality. But when it comes to things like cereal or soda or even some medicine, the store brands are 99% of the time exactly the same as the labeled brands that you all know and love. But for some reason, people tend to forget that. They act like we're talking talking about some incredibly important, super serious thing here when we're not. I understand the irony of saying that sentence 15 minutes into a however long video this is, 
but we're talking about plastic building blocks. Seriously, if you are getting upset at the plastic pieces that people use, you need to look in a mirror and ask yourself who really has the problem. Because you want to know something? I receive a lot of really negative comments on most of my videos, especially ones that use non-LEGO pieces. And every single one is about the fact that I use non-LEGO pieces. But some of these comments, which I'm not going to show you for obvious reasons, and if you're not okay with that, sorry, that's not my problem, are way over the top for the things we're talking about. I've had people call me scum of the earth, a joke, and other much harsher things that I am not going to repeat here. I've had people tell me to go kill myself because I use non-Lego bricks. Like seriously, what the hell is wrong with you? I even had one guy go comment by comment on all of my videos telling people not to listen to me because I have no right to say anything when I don't use real Lego. That same guy then went to my Discord and I had to ban him there for the comment he was making, then came back on a second account, which I also had to ban, then went to my Instagram, where I had to ban him again, and then emailed me to keep going, because apparently it meant that much to him. Seriously, what is wrong with some of you people? No, seriously, we're talking about plastic here. What the hell is going on in some of your minds, where you have to go after someone again and again and again, because it just bothers you that much? It's plastic bricks. That's literally all it is. So if you're the one going around telling people to kill themselves because they don't use Lego, I'm not the problem, you are. But of course, people are gonna try to tell me that it's not about the plastic, it's about the morality. Yeah, because telling someone to kill themselves or continuously going to every single thing that they have is totally moral. And the funny thing is, the non-LEGO community has never said anything like that to me. They have been nothing but welcoming, opening, helpful, and incredibly kind. Sure, r slash Lepin hates it when you ask the same question that's been asked 10 times that week. Seriously guys, use the search bar or just look at the pinned post. It has all of the answers that you need there. Seriously, just do it. But if you're having trouble with the set or want some extra information or anything, time and time again, I have seen people be extremely, extremely helpful. Now, a few seconds ago to switch things back here really quick, I did show this Razor Crest from Brick Vault, but more specifically the designer Jarek, who I have spoken to many times and is a wonderful, wonderful guy. I absolutely love this set. I think Jarek did a incredible job designing it. I am not okay with the fact that it uses an incredibly rare canopy piece that has literally only come out ever in one set and is extremely expensive. But I don't blame Jarek for that, I blame Brick Vault for that and then saying that they checked their sets for part availability and whatnot, despite having such an open and obvious example where that's simply not the case. And yes, I know that they provided an alternative canopy, which is what the non-LEGO versions use. Now, this non-LEGO version is one that I might end up getting one day. I don't actually know, but it is something that I've been considering doing. And even if I do, there is one really important step to take before I buy anything, and that is purchasing the instructions. Every single custom set that I show off on my channel, I purchase the instructions for. Sometimes on the rare occasion, the designer sent me the instructions for free, for instance. Hopefully sometime soon, I'll be showing off Brick Vault's version of the Eagle 5 using real LEGO. But whenever I buy non-LEGO sets, I always, always, always make sure that I support the designers in every way that I can. And the vast majority of the time, the only way to do that is by buying the instructions. If I went to Brick Vault and I spent the admittedly high $46 on these instructions, I have now supported them financially every way that I can. I could buy more instructions, yes, but when it comes specifically to this Razor Crest, the only way that I can financially support them for making this is by buying these instructions. Once I have done that, anything else I do does not support them financially in any way. It doesn't matter where I get my pieces from.
If I went to Bricklink and spent the estimated $700 to $1,000 on the pieces there, not a single penny of that goes to Brick Vault. None of it goes there at all. It doesn't matter if I spend $1,000 or $10,000 on Bricklink, not a single penny goes to Brick Vault. So if I do end up buying this non-LEGO version, again and again and I keep saying this, the same thing, no money is going to Brick Vault. But they're also not losing anything because I bought this. Again, by purchasing the instructions, I have supported them in the only possible way that I can. I know I'm repeating myself a lot there, but I really want to drive that in because again, people continue to think that buying non-LEGO is stealing from designers. And while not everybody buys the instructions, and don't get me wrong here, you absolutely should be purchasing them. Most people I know do. The overwhelming majority of the people on the r slash Lepin subreddit not only say that they buy the instructions, but are constantly advocating for others to do so and making sure that they do. The Lepin community isn't a bunch of scumbags. We just prefer cheaper but quality options. Sometimes you don't need a Ferrari when your Toyota will do. And besides, you know this wasn't really stolen, right? Like, how do you think they got the instructions in the part list? I'll give you a hint. They bought it from Brick Vault. Just like I bought the instructions for almost every single Brick Vault set on my website. I say almost because there's sets like the Ghost that I haven't bought the instructions for, but if anyone wanted to buy the part kit from me, I definitely would. Also, just to clarify, I do not sell instructions on my website. You still have to buy them from the original designers. In fact, part of the reason that I even started my website was in a hopes to maybe partner with Brick Vault to sell part kits of their sets. It's something that a ton of people have asked me for and I thought would be a really good idea. I did actually reach out to them about this and sadly they turned it down. Nothing against them or anything, by no means am I complaining about that, it was a very, very professional response from them. And Brickfall, if you're watching this, I am so sorry because you did say something in that email that I can't really let slide. Again, I don't mean anything bad by this. But part of the reason that they said no was because of piece availability on Bricklink. Some of the pieces that they use are a little rare, and so by offering part kits, those pieces might dry up. Which, for the record, was something that I actually thought about and take care of on my website. But if that's the case, shouldn't you be okay with the fact that there are more of these pieces being produced just without LEGO logos on them? Really, I just thought about this while recording. If the problem is that the market would dry up, and there is a way to still produce your set without the market drying up, shouldn't that be okay? Again, as long as people buy your instructions. I mean, even this Razor Crest only has about 30 visible studs on it, so it's not like you would really be able to tell anyway. Seriously, I bet you I could do a review of the non-LEGO version and people would be none the wiser. Now, you might be thinking that the existence of these non-LEGO sets actually hurts these designers in general, and, well, that's also not true. While it might be true for certain people, for the most part, it's not. Designers like Papa Glop have have even said that they have seen an increase in instruction sales after the non-LEGO version of their set came out, because suddenly people could afford to actually build it. Again, it's like this ghost from Brick Vault. I want to build this ghost. It is like the ultimate dream of mine on this channel, but I'm not going to spend the $65 for the instructions knowing they're going to just sit there for a while. The cost of the instructions isn't necessarily the problem. The quality whatever is a whole different thing but it's just that I can't afford the $3,000 to build this thing yet, so I'm just gonna save those $60 right now. But say a non-LEGO version of this set came out and it was like $500, that's still expensive, 
but so much better. And suddenly, people are probably going to buy more of these instructions because of it. And to be clear here, I am absolutely not okay with these companies including the instructions in their sales. I really wish they didn't do that. But one of the places that I buy from actually credits the designers of every single model linking you directly to the instructions. So it's really hard to say that designers are being hurt by this when, in fact, the opposite is most likely true. And I mean, think about it. If designers were actually being seriously hurt by this, then places like Brickfault would not be able to put out new builds every single week. And there's also one more aspect to this that people tend to overlook. Brickfall don't actually own these designs. It's an incredible gray area, actually. Because while there's absolutely nothing wrong with making a custom LEGO version of a spaceship or a vehicle or anything from any franchise, Star Wars, Aliens, literally anything, selling that design gets a little muddy. I'm using Brick Vault here as the example because they are one of the biggest known companies out there, but it's true for anyone, really. Like, there is a reason that it says Space Wars on their website instead of Star Wars, because they don't own the rights to Star Wars or to any of the things from Star Wars. They don't own the rights to the designs of the gunship, the X-Wing, to any of it. And I can almost guarantee you that when they make sales off of any of these instructions, none of that makes its way back to Disney, who now do own the designs. So it's a little hypocritical for people to cry that their designs were stolen when it's not actually your design and you're not supporting the people who did make it in the first place. Seriously, if I bought these $46 instructions, absolutely none of that would go to Disney. And while some of you are probably going to argue that doing so wouldn't even be fair, it kind of is. And again, that's why all of this is a gray area. But if you want to talk about Scummy, well, there is one designer who I want to talk about. His name is Jorstad, and you probably know about him. Originally, I wanted to show off way more of his sets on this channel. I actually bought a lot of his instructions years ago. But the truth is that I just cannot support this guy anymore. Since the last time I looked at his website, he has changed some things, which is actually really nice, so I'll just talk about those extremely briefly. First, I was looking at getting the instructions for this UCS Slave 1 in Django's colors. It said it was free. For some reason, when this first went up, it wasn't actually free. It cost one penny. Which, yes, is only a penny, but when you say something is free, it needs to be. So, good to see that he has fixed that. For a long while, he also called this thing a UCS Ender Spire. This is not UCS, and this is definitely not the Ender Spire at all. The Endar Spire, for those of you who don't know, is a Hammerhead Corvette from the Knights of the Old Republic video game. I have absolutely no idea what this is. He calls it a modified Ender Spire, but no, this is not that. Thankfully again, he did change the name to at least this and not pretending like it's a UCS set, and the instructions are now free as well. But okay, let's actually talk about these problems again, starting with some of the small things and then going to why I don't support him. First, this opening to your website is really annoying. No one wants to see this, they just want to see what you're selling. Second, this newsletter thing is even more annoying. I don't mind people asking me to sign up for their newsletter. I mean, I do a little bit, but places like Big Kid Bricks do it, and it's not so intrusive. It's a small box on the bottom of the screen. On Jorsad's website, it's a big old box that literally fades out the rest of the screen and makes you exit out of this before continuing on, and it shows up on on every single page you go to. On a smaller technical note, these three hammerheads are not UCS. I actually did look at one of these as one of my very first videos, if not my very first video, and it's not UCS in any way. It doesn't have a high piece count, and it's not highly detailed. It's actually pretty small and doesn't really do anything. Not a bad set, 
but it's not UCS. So let's talk about the problem that I have. When I first found Jorstad, he was selling the instructions for a Luker Hulk class battleship or like the droid control ship as some of you might know it. It cost $15, which was not bad, except it was only an LDD file. There was no actual PDF or actual instructions at all. And when you're talking about a set that has over 3,000 pieces, that's unacceptable. However, Jorstad did end up coming out with PDF versions of the instructions, and now charges $27.50 for them. $12.50 more than the original version. Oh, and if you bought the original version, you don't get the upgrade. Jorstad claims this is because the designs are fundamentally different. Keep that in mind. First, that is just ridiculous and stupid. Literally every other designer that I have ever bought from sends out the upgraded versions of their instructions for free whenever a change is made. I have gotten upgraded instructions from Brickwall on four separate occasions, including small changes like things with their ATAP or their microfleet, or even actual fundamental redesigns like with their Naboo Starfighter, which was a completely different build. Or if you bought the $65 instructions for their ghost, when they literally completely redesigned the entire thing over the course of a year or so, you got the new instructions for free. You did not have to buy them again, despite the build being a fundamentally different build. Rich Boy J sent out a ton of updated instructions for his Razor Crest when that first came out. I think there was like three or four days in a row where I was getting updates from him. And you know why? Because it's the right thing to do. When you are updating the instructions or the design of a set, you are, in fact, admitting that it wasn't as good as it could have been. Now, that could be for a variety of different reasons. Maybe pieces you needed didn't exist, maybe you learned new techniques, or maybe the set you made just wasn't as good as you wanted it to be. But by upgrading and updating it, you are, in a way, admitting that the original design was flawed, and so giving the people who bought that the better version that you made for free is only fair. I mean, they don't have to. Brick Vault didn't have to give the updated instructions for this ghost for free, but when you spend that much money, it was only right. So it's really, really questionable to not do the same thing here with this Lucre Hulk and claim that it's a fundamental redesign. In fact, he claims it so much so you can't find the original version on his website anymore. I mean, let's completely ignore the fact that both versions of his Venators are still available despite there being a very clear redesign there as well. I wonder if it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a redesign. Maybe it has everything to do with the fact that you can buy this in a non-LEGO version. What's that? Yeah, you can actually buy this set for $133. Or, in all fairness, if you wanted the real LEGO version, you can get it directly from Jorstad for $800. Which is again a lot of money, but is a fair cost for this. But I do have a problem with that, because I already spent the $15 on what is essentially a flawed design. Now, a new customer who never bought the original could come to Jorstad and spend only $27.50, and they would get the supposedly good version of this set. Yet someone who has already supported him doesn't get a discount, doesn't get any support of their own, no, despite already paying the $15, now they also have to pay the $27.50 for a total of $42.50 to get the good version of a set they already bought the instructions for. Do you see the problem there? And oh, by the way, the cost of these instructions actually went up. It used to only be $25. But I wanted to see. Jorstad claimed that this was fundamentally different, and to cost an extra $12.50, I better hope it is. So I bit the bullet, and I bought the instructions. And I went page by page on this thing. And I will tell you, there are changes. There are some structural changes to how the base connects to the rest of the build. It's now far more stable than it originally was. Again, another admission of the flawed design. 
The neck of the build is also different, the way that it connects to the rest of the build. Again, another admission of flawed design. And then there are some very minor cosmetic differences, and I guess there's also this UCS stand, which isn't really the ship, and so I'm not going to include it because it shouldn't be included. Guys, this is not fundamentally different. This is like 5% different, maybe. There are changes, and they are the ones that needed to be made. But in my opinion, there is absolutely no justification for a $12.50 increase, and much less so for not sending this to the people who already supported him. It's honestly rather pathetic just how much is exactly the same. Now, it is in my opinion that this was not done as a way to actually better or upgrade the design. I'm sure he wanted to and obviously found those flaws and wanted to fix them. But this was done as a way to screw over the people who were buying the non-LEGO version. And I'm pretty comfortable in saying that because of the fact that both Venators are still readily available. And that set doesn't have a non-LEGO version. Because again, think about it, if what he was saying was true, then shouldn't he have taken down the original version of his Venator as well, since a much better upgraded version is now there? You would think so. Now, imagine someone wanted to buy the non-LEGO version of this, and also wanted to support Jorstad. They would come to him, spend the $27.50 on these instructions, and then would soon realize that the instructions they bought no longer match up to what they are actually building. There is a chance that they will wrongfully get mad at whoever they bought the set from, even though they didn't do anything wrong. Or maybe they go to Jorstad, who would probably get really upset at the fact that these people are building his set using non-LEGO because he openly hates it. By the way, did I mention that he openly hates non-LEGO? Because he does. Or more than likely, they would just start using the instructions that came with the custom build, and maybe next time, they don't even consider buying the original instructions as it didn't help them the last time. I don't know what Jorstad's idea with doing this is, but the only person he's hurting is himself. I do eventually want to get his Eclipse. I'm not gonna spend the thousands of dollars getting it in real LEGO when I can just buy it in a non-LEGO form for quite cheap, actually. But I'm not gonna be showing off any of his other sets, because I was actually wrong. He's not only hurting himself, he was hurting supporting customers like me. I want to be clear here. I'm not going to buy from him again, because he actively chose to screw over people who already supported him. Also, I absolutely hate how the all in this banner here doesn't fit into the box, and I think that says everything it has to about him. So why am I talking about all this? Because it's not fair to say that the non-LEGO companies or non-LEGO distributors are the scummy ones when the LEGO community has people like this. And there's also one final very important aspect to remember about all of this. Companies like Zingbao, Mold King, or even Lepin were never targeting an American audience or even a European audience. These companies were mainly focused on a Chinese or Asian demographic. And I have a pretty strong feeling that most people in China probably don't even know who Brick Vault or any of these designers are. If you know anything about the Chinese internet, then you know exactly why I'm saying that. In other words, the target demographic for companies like Lepin were a group of people who, at no fault of their own, weren't even aware that people like Brick Vault, Papa Glop, or any of these designers existed. And again, some of the people who sell these mocks in non-LEGO form do link to the original designer's instructions. So maybe that will start to change things out there. I don't really know because that's a whole political situation I don't want to get into. But we can start to change things here. I have shown you today that the existence of these non-LEGO companies not only doesn't hurt LEGO, 
but actually has no effect on them at all. LEGO has continued to exponentially grow despite the increasing growth of non-LEGO companies and the ease of access to them. And I also showed you that it's a little difficult to say that designers are actually being hurt by this when several have come out and said that they have seen an increase in sales and other designers are actively hurting the people who supported them. And here's part of the problem with that that I didn't really mention earlier. It's incredibly difficult for designers to actually prove that they are being hurt by this, and Brickfall are in a wonderful position to do such right now. The Mold King version of their Razorcrest is being released in just a few days as of the time of making this video. So Brickfall are in a position where they could look at the amount of sales for their Razorcrest instructions before this release date, and then compare it to an equal amount of time afterwards. That's the important part, it has to be an equal equal amount of time, and I'm really curious what the results would be. The problem here is that even if the sales go down, that doesn't actually mean anything. Because as I'm sure you've heard before, correlation does not equal causation. If their sales go down after this release date throughout the entire equal amount of time as before, it will be a lot easier to show and say that yes, their sales are in fact being hurt. But unfortunately, there's nothing that says their sales wouldn't have gone down anyway. They did have this thing for pre-order after all, and were hinting at it for a while before it came out. Sales of items tend to decline over time anyway, so I have almost no doubt that if Brickfall were to conduct this experiment, they would see a decline in sales. I don't think it's going to be a sudden sharp decrease or anything like that, it'll probably just be a natural progression, and there's even the chance that the opposite will happen and more people will purchase them as we've seen with several other designers. But the important part for you, the consumer, is to make sure that you do support these designers. Please do make sure that you actually buy their instructions so that you can show your support to them. I know a little bit about how the financial aspect of Brick Vault works and I cannot say that here, but I can tell you that when you buy the instructions, you are directly supporting the designers and helping them a lot. Or even buying instructions off of Rebrickable works in a very very similar way, but I really don't think that it's fair to fight all this as if it was a war when it's really not. And one of the things I also talked about today was how if you call it Lepin, it kind of shows that you don't know what you're talking about. It's like when I tell people that I love soccer and they come up to me and go, why? All they do is flop around all the time. Well, I'm sorry you don't see the giant chess match and super mental aspect of the game where the 11 players of a team have to work as a single unit while trying to outmaneuver and outsmart the other side. And if one player even messes up in the slightest way, it could lead to absolute disaster. It's not just flopping around, it's actually pretty exciting. Yes, people go crazy when they score goal because it's actually incredibly difficult to do. So please stop calling it Lepin when it's not. I know that's a little confusing when one of the best forums for this is the r slash Lepin subreddit, but that was named before Lepin shut down and everything else exploded. But if you do call it Lepin, I'm guessing that you're either pretty new or you just don't know better. And if you are new, that's fine. But there are several prominent people who continue to call it Lepin and kind of just look dumb. And with that, I think I finally covered everything I wanted to in this video. I'm fairly certain this is going to cause some discussion and people probably aren't going to be okay with some of the things I said. Please do try to keep your comments civil. If they're not, you're not even going to see them. Because I do want to know your thoughts, so please do put them in the comments down below and do it in a friendly manner. Remember to like this video if you liked what you saw, and subscribe if you are interested in seeing even more. I generally focus on custom LEGO, but this is a video that's been in the works for literally over a year at this point, and I'm happy that I could finally get it out. And I was able to do so in part thanks to my patrons and YouTube members. I'm working on trying to get more rewards for you guys, and I know that's a really hard thing to do sometimes, but I do appreciate your continued support. It really means so much to me. And as always, I have to give shout outs to Jonathan and Project Elements for being at that top tier level. Thank you all so much for watching this incredibly long video, and I will see you next time.